We want to talk about artificial intelligence, AI, because the White House this week launched a new AI website. And part of this is to make sure the United States remains dominant in developments with AI because China is catching up. Putting this in perspective for us, but much more, we invite into the stream Ash Fontana. He is Zeta Venture Managing Director and also the author of the AI First Company. It's good to have you here. Um, just want to ask you real quick about what the White House did with this website. How does that help the U.S. Uh, maintain preeminence, uh, preeminence when it comes to AI development? Look, I think the White House has uh, undergone a number of initiatives over the last decade or so, particularly around the Obama White House's initiatives in making public data available to sort of increase awareness, but also increase access to data and also start thinking about how we could develop an advantage through policy. And this is just another step in that direction. You know, I wouldn't say anything particularly significant, but, you know, there's certainly an awareness in the White House and the Biden White House of where we are with respect to other other actors um, that are, have very different intentions to us and our need to catch up. Ash, where are we right now in investing in AI? When you take a look at COVID's impact as well, a lot, lots of talk about the fact that it's accelerated the investment there. How are you viewing that? Yeah, look, it certainly has. The imperative to automate has been really significant over the last couple of years, you know, from the very obvious reasons to automate, which are people can't be in factories around each other, um, to the less obvious reasons to automate, such as people needing to um, sort of collaborate and change the way they move information around. There's been an absolute explosion in investment in this field. I am certainly seeing every day companies getting funded um, in, in ways that I haven't seen in a decade in this field. You know, companies out of the gate, five, six people getting 40 or $50 million before they even have a product out the door. Um, so it's been a pretty interesting year to be in this field. And more broadly, I would say we're at the point where, you know, a lot of investors truly understand the power of it. And I think, you know, a lot of it's because a lot of companies are really truly understanding the power of it now. But you look at I'm, I'm just checking out a chart right now. Alphabet uh, stock is at twenty three hundred fifty eight. Mm. And, and they are, in your words, the premier AI first company. There's more than four or five people getting 40 million in investment there. <laughs> yes, certainly the case. I mean, Alphabet really is the truly AI first company. Um, out there. It is the company that from day one was so strategic about how they collected data, how they built products. To, they gave away so many products that collected data and improved the core product. Everything was about how do we keep this flywheel going and get it going um, on our search product and then all these ancillary things like their cars and whatnot. And they were just so intentional about that from day one. Other companies have sort of been less deliberate uh, than Alphabet, and and it shows many years later. You know, they still have one of the most defensible businesses, and you still can't really catch up to them. Ash, I have to ask you about jobs since we have the jobs report out this morning, AI's impact on the labor market. How are you seeing that? Because we know there's fears mm -hmm. out there that AI is going to replace jobs that have that has not materialized yet. But what do you what do you see over the next five, 10, 15 years? It's just not going to materialize. I mean, I have a pretty strong opinion on this. You know, AI does not necessarily take jobs and the jobs it takes, it creates more. You know, it's it's not materializing and it's not going to. And people need to move the conversation beyond that to one about, you know, how do we actually automate so we get more from less? You know, it's a tool. It's a lever. It helps us get more from less. It helps us do thinking while we're asleep. It helps us see perspectives we can't see. And just like every other sort of fear around technology taking jobs for the last couple of hundred years, it hasn't materialized. You know, so many of the jobs we have now didn't exist. You know, you and I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily have the same jobs we have without all of this technology and without all the AI happening in the background as we have this conversation. Um, so it's, it's not going to materialize. Um, I don't see anything significant changing over the next five to 10 years in terms of the numbers we're talking about. Now, of course, people's jobs will change. Of course, things people will be doing will change. And of course, there are some policy considerations around that 
you know, for example, making sure people are protected in certain ways in terms of how they effectively work by giving data. That's an interesting concept that we're just starting to really grapple with. Um, but overall, you know, the, the overall numbers we're talking about, it, we're not going to be able to put down much or any of that to AI. Um, we're going to be able to put it down to lots of other factors, um, lots of other mismanagement and policy factors, but we're not going to be able to put it down to AI. As you mentioned technology, that makes this conversation possible. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a 1950s Bell telephone over there. So we've come a long way. Ash Classic. Fontana is head of Venture Managing Director and author. It's good to have you here and author of the AI First Company. All the best to 